Consider the following four processes with arrival times and their length of CPU bursts in milliseconds as shown below. Process P1, P2, P3, P4 having arrival times 0, 1, 3 and 4 and CPU burst time 3, 1, 3 and Z. The processes are run on a single processor using preempt shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm. If the average waiting time of the process is 1 millisecond, the value of Z is dash. So this is a question from operating systems regarding process scheduling. Now in this question, what we are doing is we are scheduling these processes using preempt shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm. In preempt shortest remaining time scheduling algorithm, what we do is from among the processes, we will choose the one which has the shortest remaining time and we will allocate that to the processor. We will give the processor to that process and we will run that process. Now while we are running some process, if some new process comes in and if that has a shortest remaining time even smaller than the currently running one, then we will allocate the processor to the new process which came in just now. We will run that and after it finishes, we will give it back to some other process. Now based on that information, let us look at how these processes will be scheduled. So initially at time 0, we have only process P1, so we will run that. At time 1, process P2 arrives and if you see the remaining time for P1 is, P1 had a total burst time of 3 milliseconds, the remaining time is 2 milliseconds, but P2 has a remaining time of 1 millisecond which is less than 2. So immediately P2 will get the processor, so P2 will be running. At time 2, nothing happens. At time 2 actually what happens is P2 will be finished executing. Now, P2, since P2 had only 1 millisecond, so P2 will finish. At that time, there is only one process left, that is P1. So, P1 will start running from 2 to 3. At time 3, process P3 arrives. And P3 had a remaining time of 3 millisecond, which is actually what? Which is greater than whatever P1 had. P1 ran from 0 to 1 and 2 to 3, meaning P1 ran for 2 millisecond. It had a total burst time of 3 milliseconds so the remaining time for p1 is only 1 millisecond that is less than the remaining time for p3 that which is 3 so at time 3 also p1 will keep on running till time 4 at this point p4 arrives at this point p1 would have finished executing because p1 ran for 3 milliseconds p2 also finished executing because p2 only had 1 millisecond and that also is done now only p3 and p4 are remaining p3 has 3 milliseconds remaining P4 has Z milliseconds remaining. Now, currently, let us find out what the average waiting time is. P1 waited for only 1 millisecond when P2 was running. P2 didn't wait for any time because whenever P2 came, immediately P2 was running. So, wait time of P1 equal to 1, P2 equal to 0. And these two is fixed because both of these have finished running. The current waiting time of P3 is 1 millisecond. P3 arrived at time 3 from 3 to 4 p1 was running so p3 waited for 1 millisecond so far p4 just came in so p4 has waited for 0 milliseconds so far now these two processes are not yet finished so these two's value will change now the current average waiting time is 1 plus 1 2 divided by 4 that is 0.5 milliseconds only now in the question it's given that the average waiting time of the process is 1 millisecond so somehow we need to make it 1 millisecond currently all the processes together has only waited for 2 milliseconds. If they wait for 4 milliseconds in total, then only the average waiting time will be 4 by 4 equal to 1. So we need to make them wait for 4 milliseconds combined. P1 and P2 is fixed. P3 and P4 will change. So somehow we need to add 2 millisecond waiting time to process P3 and P4. Now, at this point, we have two options. Either we can run the process P3 or the process P4. If process P3 is running immediately, it will mean that the Z value is at least equal to 3. Only then P3 will get that time slot because it is shortest remaining time for scheduling algorithm. So if P3 runs immediately, P4's, P4's burst time Z should be at least equal to 3. But if P3 runs, P3 will keep on running for 3 milliseconds and after that P4 will be running. So to P4 we will be adding an additional wait time of 3 milliseconds if P3 is running immediately. If that happens, then the total wait time would be 1 plus 1 plus 3, which added for while P3 was running, P4 was waiting. So total will be 1 plus 1 plus 3, that is 5 by 3, that will be equal to greater than 1. 5 by 4, that is 1.25, that is greater than 1 in the question. So if P3 is running immediately, then the average waiting time will be greater than or equal to 1 millisecond, which means P4 has to run immediately. So P4 will be running for some time and then P3 will be running. 
So for whatever time P4 runs, that will be added to the waiting time of P3. Now we know we had to add a waiting time of only 2 milliseconds, right? So P4 should be running for 2 milliseconds only, which means Z should be equal to 2. When that happens, P4 will run from 4 to 6, when Z is 2, P4 runs and after that P3 runs from 6 to 9. Then the waiting time of P4 would be 0, P3 would be additional 2 seconds added here. So total will be 2 plus 1 plus 1, that is 4 by 4, that will be equal to 1, which is given in the question, 1 millisecond average waiting time. So Z should be 2.